All right, Ron, we're live. I'm going to zoom in on you. Say hi. Welcome to church. <laughs> All right. So we are live.
morning, church. Good morning. It, it was super hot, and now it's not. So I, I don't, I don't know what happened. I came over this morning. It was almost a little chilly out. I almost needed a, a windbreaker or something. But I'm glad. I'm glad it's not that hot. Amen. Uh, Melissa called me as I was getting things uh, set up this morning. She'll be home today, hopefully by noon. Uh, they had a great time at the county fair, but when I went to see her on Friday, I thought she was melting. Or on Thursday, Friday, I thought she was melting. So just so hot out. And Welcome on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost, on this day the Lord has made. Our greeting this morning, which is uh, on the screen, and also for those who are watching online and, and those who have a bulletin, is taken from Psalm 111, 10a, New Revised Standard Version. I'm going to read, and you are welcome to respond as we enter into worshiping our great God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Let us worship in wisdom and in truth. Our unison gathering prayer for this morning comes to us from 1 Kings 2 and the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. Let us say this prayer together as we are able. Eternal God, source of wisdom and understanding, your ways lead the upright of heart. Give us wise and discerning minds that we may seek your wisdom above earthly riches as Solomon did. Father David, grant us pure and unblemished souls that we may speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Be with us in this time of worship that we may learn to discern good from evil and seek to live our lives with your wisdom and grace. Amen. One thing I did forget to mention, um, I know it's this, there, there are two, uh, two guys that I don't like. Everyone's welcome to this church except for two guys. One is bogey, and for those golfers here, you know what I'm talking about. And the second one is COVID, and I know that our COVID cases have been spiking. Uh, hospitalizations have been spiking. Uh, many of the people, most of the people that are being hospitalized are unvaccinated folks. Certainly people um, in this country have a choice uh, in whether or not they want to get vaccinated. But I do know that the cases are spiking. Um, some people are starting to wear masks. So we're keeping our, our finger on the pulse of this. Uh, we haven't made any changes yet. Um, if things continue in that direction, I don't think anybody wants a mask mandate, but we'll have to see how things go. So things are, are, are the way they are for now. Uh, hopefully the, the spike in cases can get under control. Um, I know in some places, not so much here in New York, um, some hospitals are, are overrun uh, with people that have COVID. So I say all that before we greet our neighbor, uh, just to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to shake hands or a little more spread out, you can do that. So let's share with each other the peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Dave Music Ministry comes from my very own Mary Jane and Dave Plummer. Good morning. You had a birthday yesterday, right? So this is for you? Yeah, that's right. I do have a birthday. 
You wanted one too? Well, you know, so I, so here's the funny thing. I made today's kids' message, and then I saw all the pictures from your birthday party, and something in your pictures was exactly what I was going to talk about. You know what I was going to talk about today? Cake. You like cake? You like cake? What's your favorite kind of cake? Chocolate. Chocolate? How about you? Chocolate. Does mom ever make a cake maybe on a Friday or Saturday just for no reason, just to make a cake? No, no, you're not. You, don't, you never make a cake. No, so but you know how some people they'll just make a cake, or you're at like a restaurant and they'll get cake for no reason. Have you ever seen people do that? Yeah. Is that the same as birthday cake? No. So is a birthday cake more special than if you're somewhere and someone gives you a piece of cake? Is it? What, why? What makes birthday cake special? I mean, every, every time, if you're at a friend's house and you have a piece of cake, you put candles on it and sing and blow the candles out? No. Or, or when you get married, how many of you had really beautiful wedding cakes that, that are or were married? And then you keep, like, the top and you put it in the freezer for a year, right? I don't know. Most of that I didn't do that. I don't know why people do that, but you're supposed to do that, right? So, so where I'm going with this is there's regular cake and then there's birthday cake or there's anniversary cake or things like that. This morning I'm talking about communion. You know when you come forward and you get the bread and the juice? Do you ever have bread and juice at home or something with bread and juice while you're eating? Maybe you have a sandwich and you have apple juice. Have you ever done that before? So it's still bread and juice, but when we do it in church, it's really, really significant. It's like birthday cake or it's like wedding cake because when we do it in church, we're doing it for Jesus. So we don't have communion today, which I kind of wish we did because talks about that. So when we take communion in church, it's like birthday cake or like wedding cake. Not, not as sweet, not as sugary, <laughs> but we're doing it for Jesus. So can you pray with me? All right, ready? Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we had a fun vacation Bible school this week. Uh, the adults are thankful that it was three days, not five. That's why we're still alive. And uh, we're so thankful for our kids. We're, we're, we're hoping and praying that next month we can start Sunday school again and start our youth ministries again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do I, does Pastor Paul get to keep the balloon? No? He's like, I don't think, I don't think so. I was, well, you didn't even think about that. Christy said that was a hard no, so. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would have I would have given the pastor the balloon just because that's what I would do, and he's like, I don't think so. So, uh, just some announcements. I, I want to read a card to all of you. Uh, you know, after our vacation Bible school, after uh, we had a successful funeral for Suzanne Navinger this past Wednesday, my heart is so full, and I am so proud of this church. Um, the fact that a young kid like me gets to be the pastor here uh, is pretty amazing. And, and we just have a church that, that pulls together, that does so much. But this, this card is from Melinda Short um, in reference to John Short, who passed away. And by the way, I forgot to mention the flowers last week for John Short. These are in memory of Suzanne Navinger, uh, Roy Navinger's sister. So this is what the card from Melinda says. Pastor Paul at SUMC, on behalf of our family, I wish to thank you for your many visits, calls, and prayers, and the many cards we received for Dad. The church has been a great support for us, and we have appreciated the care we have been given and the care we still receive. It is at, it is at times overwhelming, yet it is helping us through. The words thank you seem so little, but everything has meant so much. Sincerely, Melinda Short. So friends, when, when we have people that are sick, when we have people that are dying, I am proud to be part of a church that, you know, what, what did you say, Sarah? When, when you had COVID, you had enough cards to choke a horse? Yep. And I said to Sarah, why would you choke a horse? And she said, it's just an expression, Pastor. I said, okay. <laughs> so again, these flowers are in honor of Suzanne Navinger. Uh, these flowers up here, of course, are the ones we get every Saturday from the flower shop in, in, uh, right on Main Street. If you know anybody that their day would be brightened by those flowers, just grab, grab one on the way out. Bring them to them. Maybe, maybe someone's having a hard time. Maybe they just need a little love. Maybe they're sick. You know, that's what the church does, right? We love each other. We care for each other. So we do have our, our Diedrich Bonhoeffer study. I think we have one or two books on the table back there. Uh, it's Monday night at 6, and we had our second session this morning. 
There was a few of us there. Really great book. You can jump in, even though we've already started. Uh, Bonhoeffer is one of my heroes. Was a German Lutheran pastor during World War II. Monday night, we have my friend from North Africa, Wolf Spassold. He's from Germany. He was alive during World War II, and he goes, I didn't even know who this guy was, and I'm from the country. So it's a really good study. We'll have it tomorrow night at 6, and uh, for the next few Mondays, and we'll have it the next two Sunday mornings at 8.45. We just want to jump in a session. It's really, really good. Uh, today we were talking about living in Christian community, that even though we go to church on Sunday, our faith is more than just an hour, or hour and 15 minutes. Pastor gets long-winded, let's not lie. It's more than just a service. It's us. It's us living our faith out together. It's us visiting each other. It's us bringing each other food. It's us caring for each other. I, when I went to the uh, funeral reception for Suzanne Navinger, boy, I had a really good piece of carrot cake, and the Navingers left. They said, well, we didn't make it. Sarah Pretzel brought it to us last night. So that's what, that's what churches do. That's what good churches do. So again, study tomorrow night at 6, Sunday morning at 8.45. Our men's lunch this Thursday, Woot Woot, is at uh, Roma's. Um, all of the, uh, the coolest and funnest guys will be there. And if you want to be added to those numbers, you can come along. It's a good time. We say grace. And what happens after that, Ron? We, we, what's the, what happens in Vegas between those commercials? Right there. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll be at Roma's Thursday. Uh, our Bible study will be Tuesday at 430 at noon. We're doing the 365-day Bible study. We're going through the whole thing, cover to cover. Whole lot to, to go over. So uh, if you want to jump jump on, I will post it on our Facebook page. I sent an email out, or as Roy Navinger say, boy, you know how to email pastor. I said, that's for sure. So we'd love to have you. We have the packet if you want to study it. Uh, you'll see a, a bin right out of the narthex here. We're doing a school supplies drive so that um, kids that go back to city, uh, I think predominantly elementary school, will have the supplies they need. We don't have a list yet, but basic things like paper, pencils, notebooks, uh, crayons, I mean, these are pretty standard things that most kids need. Uh, this Thursday night is the women's night out uh, at 6 p.m., and that's at Club 55, right? How many did you have last time? We had 21 left. 21, there's no reason to brag there. It's not about numbers. So, so uh, I, hope, I hope you can join Sarah and Melissa this Thursday at 6 at Club 55. It's, it's a time of women's fellowship and a time where we are together being a church. Uh, there are flyers on the back tables and the entrance tables on September 11th, 9-11. There's going to be a Christian festival event in Unadilla from 4 to 7. Uh, I've been working with the Unadilla United Methodist Church and some other ones. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. We're going to have testimonies. We're going to have crafts for the kids. And we hope and pray that that festival brings people closer to the grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So hope that you uh, can make it to that if you're available. Next month on September 26th, we're going to be having a service of celebration and remembrance to mark that we have gotten this far in the pandemic. Hopefully things don't get worse because it will kind of defeat the purpose of, of that service. So uh, I will have more uh, information for that coming out. Uh, on Sunday, the uh, September uh, 13th, we're going to have a rally day. And this will all be in the newsletter, so if I'm throwing these things at you fast, don't worry. Uh, after church on Sunday, September 13th, we're going to have a Dish to Pass picnic at Heath Clark Park, and that will be sort of a recruitment and a launching day for Sunday school. And I know, uh, Deb, did you want to say anything about Vacation Bible School? And as she is coming forward, I know that we prayed for her last Sunday, Deb Hermata, our beloved children's ministry leader, is getting treated for cancer, and she did a phenomenal job leading our Vacation Bible School. We have, what, 15 kids. Let, let, let's thank you. everybody that donated food. I want to thank everybody for your help, setting up, taking down. We had many hands. It wasn't easy because we did do everything outside. All the tables, chairs, everything had to be moved outside. Um, we prayed for no rain. We got that wish. What I didn't think about was the heat. <laughs> and it was very hot. The kids didn't seem to mind at all. And um, we did move our music downstairs into the fellowship room, and Miss Amanda did a fantastic job. We had hula hoops so the kids were spaced apart. There wasn't a lot of singing. They learned a lot of actions to the music. So I think we did it very safely. The kids were wonderful about masking up in church when they were next door to each other. And we 
just had a fantastic three days. We had 15 kids, seven of them were four and five years old. So that group, they had their hands full, right, Dick and Christy? <laughs> um, but it was a wonderful time. And we hope to share a little bit of that with you next week. I'm going to have a slideshow with some of the pictures. Miss Amanda has agreed to come to church. I think I have four kids right now that are willing to come, and they're just going to show you what they learned in their music time. And I think maybe instead of us giving them a children's story, they can give us a little entertainment. So we'll look forward to that next week. And like the pastor said, we have the school supplies, which is another mission of the church to the community. So. You know, it's hard right now because we don't really know for sure what is needed, but those things are always needed. There's so many kids out there, and I know there's other organizations that provide, but I still think it's important for the church to support the school and the community. And we will have more on Sunday school, and we'll have more on the picnic as time goes by. So thank you.
extend prayers for the family of Suzanne Navinger, and these flowers are here from her service. So good to have the, the Navinger family uh, here for that service on Wednesday. They've been part of this church, I think, for three or four generations. So what a legacy they are. What a great joy it was to have our vacation Bible school. Uh, and Deb, we are, we are continuing to pray for you. I know that you're going to continue to go through chemo treatments. My personal prayer is when you go to the doctor next time, they go, Deb, we can't explain it, but it's completely gone. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, Sherry, I know that your brother, you said it had a stroke, right? Great. And he's, he's, he's still at, was it Strong or Wilson? Okay. Okay. Well, if you want me to go down there, just let me know. So prayers for uh, Sherry's brother. What, what's his first name again? Okay. Okay. So prayers for him. Had a stroke, but is improving. Thank you for that. Uh, I was very saddened to hear yesterday that the country of Haiti, which is the poorest country in the Western hemisphere of the world, they had a 7.2 earthquake uh, when I, or, or near Haiti. And when I when I read the numbers last night, there was 227 confirmed dead. It's probably increased um, because they're such a poor country when they build things. They certainly don't build them the way we do. Houses have collapsed, um, services. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of missions down there. There are Methodist churches, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. So um, just prayers for them. Um, there will probably be opportunities in the coming days and weeks to give, to help those, uh, to help Haiti. So just prayers for our brothers and sisters down there. Um, prayers for uh, Melissa. She had a really great week down at the fair. I hope to see her on Friday. And uh, September 4th will be our 17th anniversary. And when I married my wife, she was a quiet, timid girl. And uh, now when I go down, she's in charge of 4-H. And uh, she knows what she's doing. And this person goes here and that person goes. I would say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. So uh, she'll, be home, uh, she'll be home by 12 today. Uh, hopefully she'll get some much needed rest. And the kids in, in Cuyahoga County and Oviedo were just so excited to have the fair. Uh, the highlight for me was I, I saw ducks in kiddie pools, and I was so excited that I sent pictures to all of our church leaders. I guess that's how they kept, kept them cold, but little kiddie pools used to play with. I walked by and there were ducks floating in there, and I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. So I was told um, right before church that Rosemary Fisher had her baby, and I, I think I got the name right, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Franklin Tracy Fisher. Okay, so, and, and how much did he weigh? Seven pounds, you said? Seven pounds, three ounces. Seven pounds, three ounces. So Rosemary, who works at uh, C.H. Landers, one of the funeral directors there, had her baby. So she'll be out on, on maternity leave for a while. Is that right? Eight weeks. So I'll probably be getting a lot of calls from Jeff Bagley saying, hey, can you help me do a funeral? And then he's going to do it. So any other, uh, any other joys and concerns this morning? Yes, sir. That's right, 44 years, right? You got married at six, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw the picture, you know. It's, uh, you haven't aged a bit. So 40, 44 years, congratulations on that. Any other, any other birthdays or anniversaries to have here this morning? Well, we had Melanie who was yesterday, right? So any other? Okay, well, if there are no more joys and concerns, then happy birthday, Melanie, and you should get that balloon back from your brother, but that's just me. So, all right, let's, <laughs> let's be in an attitude of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church, and while the building of this church is beautiful and blessed, we thank you even more for the people that inhabit it. We thank you for this congregation that has existed for almost 200 years, this congregation of people that love each other deeply, seek to bring each other closer to Christ, and care for each other in the deepest of ways. People that feed, people that clothe, people that do all of these things because they aren't just members of a church, they are the church. God, we thank you so much for the many blessings in our lives, but we do lift up to you those people that suffer, people that are suffering in our midst and people that are suffering in Sydney and far and wide. May you be ever present in their suffering. May you reveal to them your grace and your mercy, and may we be the church, your hands and feet. Somebody's suffering, we're going to bring them flowers. Somebody's suffering, we're going to sit with them while they cry. Somebody's suffering, we're going to bring them food. Because the church of Jesus Christ is called to love and transform Sydney and the community. God, we thank you this day for our Sydney United Methodist Church and 
the great mission that you've given us to bring people into relationship with your son, Jesus, and equip people to transform Sydney and the world. We thank you for our brothers and sisters across the street at Sacred Heart and all the churches near and far that seek to bring people to your son, that seek to love, heal, and forgive, and to make our communities and our world a better place. We pray for our church and all churches. We pray for our men and women in uniform, our six branches of the armed service, our firefighters, EMTs, first responders, police officers, our paramedics, our incredible men and women in the medical field that are again battling this terrible thing called COVID-19. We are so proud of our men and women in uniform. Some wore camo, some wore scrubs. But most of these people, the majority of these people, get up every day wanting to honor you and serve their community and make the world better. And may we let them know that we are thankful for their sacrifice and the work that they do. On this day, God, we pray for our government. We pray for our president, our vice president, our governor, and the governor that's incoming in about a week. And uh, we pray for our congresspersons, our senators. We pray for our government, God, because you commanded us to in your word. We pray for our leaders. May you work through them or, if need be, in spite of them. We pray for the persecuted Christian church all over the world where people cannot express and live their Christian faith because it is illegal or it is oppressed. Places like North Korea, places in China where they cannot be Christian because, heaven forbid, God, we put your son as our savior and not the dictator of that country. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for all oppressed people, victims of human trafficking, people that are, are tricked and swindled, people that are taken advantage of. As Christians, we are living to a higher standard of love and care and mercy. We are supposed to be honest and upright, God, and we pray that you would use us to do so, so that the world that is broken will be made whole. We pray again for those who suffer. We pray again for those who are hurting. And as the church, use us and guide us to be the church and the people you've called us to be. As we unite our hearts, our minds, and our voices to pray that prayer that your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, taught us to pray nearly 2,000 years ago when he told his disciples, when you pray to God, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ron, thanks for reading the scripture this morning. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalms. Chapter 111, Psalm on page 531 and 532 in the Pew Bible, so you can follow on the screen. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the words of the Lord studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty, his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his work in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever and be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sends redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awful in his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. New Testament reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 5 through 20. Found on page 183 or on the screen. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God.
be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and praise, psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. This is the word of God to you, the people of God. Thank you, God. Our hymn of preparation, uh, written by Charles Wesley, the founder of Methodism's brother, uh, who was a great hymn writer, is Come Sinners to the Gospel of Peace. I think it was written in the 1730s. You can tell it in Nerd Iron. 339, please stand and sing as we're in.
Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Once again, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. After reading scriptures like that, it's not a confusion to me that some people over the 2,000 years of the Christian church have incorrectly said Christians are cannibals because they eat flesh and drink blood. Not literally, and that's what I want to talk about this morning. I remember when I was serving a church uh, in Freeville and in the city of Portland. We had a very nice man there. He was the first one I met. He showed me around the whole church. He was a much older man, and I had the joy of doing his funeral service when he passed on. A pillar of the church was right across the street from the church, and he had a thing in the latter years of his life of hosting for an exchange student. He had three girls, I think, that had come in from Beijing, China, and they had never been in a Christian church, and they had never been to a church service. And I told them, as most Methodist churches do, that we have an open communion table. If you want to know Jesus more, you can come forward and have the bread and the juice. And they just kind of grimaced. And after the church, I remember, or church service, I remember saying to them, you know you could have came forward, right? And they said, well, we don't drink blood and we don't eat flesh. So they thought that we were literally drinking maybe pig blood, and I had hunks of meat up there, and that's what we were eating. But that is what the words say this morning from Jesus. So the past two weeks and the coming uh, two weeks after this, I've been doing preaching a sermon series called Feeding the Body and the Soul. We have this reality as Christians that we have the things of this world and the things of heaven. We can't escape the world. We can't escape the things of heaven. It's like a seesaw. It goes back and forth. Some days we're hyper-focused on the things of earth. We're hyper-focused on bills, getting the kids here, getting the kids there. Some days we seem to be more focused on heaven. And I don't know about you, but when I'm more focused on God, I am much happier and have more peace. Anybody else? Can you say that by a show of hands? When you're focused on bills and things you have to do and the guy that cut you off in traffic, not too much Jesus in that moment sometimes, is there? So the first Sunday and last Sunday, we had these really good uh, uh, gospel scriptures from Jesus saying he is the bread of life. So the first Sunday, I talked about how we should feed people the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only perfect person that ever walked the earth that lived, breathed, and died for us, shed his blood, broke his flesh so that we can be forgiven. Nothing more powerful to me that when I've been on walk to Emmaus and other retreats to see a man or a woman realize that everything they have ever done, everything wrong, everything corrupt, people, some of them that have been incarcerated, had drug or alcohol addiction issues, in that moment realizing that Jesus loves them and they are truly forgiven. And seeing people fall on the floor and weep like a child because they realize in that moment, finally for the first time in their life, they're good enough that God truly loves them. We're called to do that, but we're also called to feed bodies. We're also called to clothe. We're also called to take care of people's needs. If somebody comes to the parsonage and they have no food, I'm going to give them food because that's what Christians do. And last Sunday, I said, when we look in the mirror in our bathroom, wherever we look, are we seeing people that are more focused on God or more focused on the earth? I think if we're honest, some days it's more the earth. Maybe sometimes it's more on God. But what I want to talk about this morning is what Jesus said in the scripture. Really, really powerful words. And if you take it at face value, um, it, it's pretty powerful. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. We tend to express this 
and the sacrament of holy communion now most methodist churches we have communion once a month some methodist churches used to have it every three months do you remember that some churches have actually gone to having communion every week as very theological seminary has communion or the eucharist every single day on their campus john wesley our founder said it was a powerful sacrament that we encounter christ in it so communion is significant and that's what i want to talk a little bit about this morning now when we have communion dick and by bring pita bread that they get from great american and they get uh, grape juice that they probably get from great american it comes in things of this earth but it becomes something heavenly for us so there's that connection between the earth and the divine in our in our uh, reading this morning from psalm 111 5 to 7 it says he provides food for those who fear him he is ever mindful of his covenant he has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the heritage of the nations the works of his hands are faithful and just all his precepts are trustworthy and in our in the gospel of matthew chapter 26 verses 26 to 28 this is what it says about that last supper or monday or holy thursday while they were eating jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it he broke it gave it to the disciples and said take this is my body then he took the cup and after giving thanks he gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is the blood my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin i have probably taken communion in my life hundreds or thousands of times how many of you have done that as well maybe thousands it's not a record here i'm thinking Les gregory probably has this all beat that's just a guess though <laughs> what is communion why do we do it why do we bring in the bread or the wafer or the matzo the juice or in some traditions the wine why do we have juice as methodists we have that because of alcoholism at the last supper jesus had the fruit of the vine his was fermented ours isn't i don't know if it's a big deal whether or not it's fermented is it a big deal probably not so we have red grape juice that symbolizes his blood and we have bread or or wafers or crackers we even have gluten free now too i don't know if that was an issue when jesus's disciples were here but our tables open in the methodist church because we want everybody to experience the grace of god in jesus christ so this morning jesus says very clearly eat my flesh and drink my blood our roman catholic brothers and sisters would say to you very truly they have wafers and they have wine but as the priest consecrates that and those bells are rung for anybody that's been to a mass it literally becomes the physical body and blood of christ it still looks smells tastes like a wafer and wine but it mysteriously becomes the body and blood of christ i went to seminary with a greek orthodox uh, uh, student named sergios and i asked him what the greek orthodox understanding of the trinity was and he said i'll tell you what my pastor said and i said okay get to miss me i said that's it he goes that's it i said so what happens in communion i'll tell you what my priest said get to miss me that's what he said so what i told the kids this morning is if you have bread and juice at home it's common if you have cake at home it's common but if you have a birthday cake or a retirement cake or a wedding cake it's more significant when we come to church and we receive the bread in the cup it's not like receiving bread in the cup at our house it is significant our roman catholic brothers and sisters say it's literally the flesh and blood of christ mysteriously smelling looking and tasting like bread and juice our lutheran brothers and sisters would say it's a mixture of the two and our baptist brothers and sisters this is my mom's theology not mine sarah might agree say it's just bread and ju juice nothing to see here repent come forward receive it because that's what jesus said to do nothing significant about it don't need a prayer of confession don't need to consecrate it i was at my parents old church once and they didn't even pray over the communion the pastor just said whatever you're ready just come up and take it because that's what jesus said to do it was really disheartening for me during the shutdown to have our individual communion cups because I like coming forward. I like sharing the cup and the bread. Who likes that too? I like to see all of you, most of you, most of you. And, and I get to give you the bread, I get to give you the cup. It's, it's a nice moment for me. We are taking one piece of bread, one loaf, and the way Christ's body was broken, we are sharing it with each other. And the way his blood was poured out on the cross, we're sharing that with each other. Now in the Methodist tradition, 
And we could be wrong, which is the same as the Anglican or Episcopal or, or Church of England tradition. We say in the Methodist Church that when we have communion, that Christ is present. Christ is present in the bread. Christ is present in the, in the juice. Christ is present in us. We would say it's a spiritual presence, not physical presence. But we say all the words let this be the body and blood of Christ. And we believe in the United Methodist Church that when we receive communion, we are very truly coming into contact with Jesus Christ. Now, some denominations would say you should be baptized or be a member of the church before you have communion. And there are good biblical and theological arguments for that. And at the end of the day, some of them might be right and we might be wrong. But we know that when you come to the table, when you receive that birthday cake, that wedding cake that is Jesus Christ, it can transform you. I've seen people receive communion and it's had a profound impact on them. I've seen people receive communion and have tears streaming down their face. There are different theologies of this, but because of these words, because they are in the gospel, it leaves Christians throughout the centuries to say, so what do we call this bread and cup? This bread and grape juice, this bread and wine. Is it just a symbol? We would say it's a symbol in the Methodist Church, but we believe Christ is present. We call it the real presence. I pray over it, and when we come forward, we believe that in us, and in the cup and the bread, the spiritual power of Jesus Christ is there. And for me, if I didn't believe that, if I had a much lesser view, it's just bread grape cake. It's not birthday cake. It's not wedding cake. Believing that Christ is present in us and through us in what we're eating and what we're taking when we have communion is the power of communion, is the significance of communion. And what Jesus was saying this morning is his broken body and his poured out blood is how we come into contact with him. And he's saying literally in this, however you want to interpret it, that communion is important, and he will tell us this in other, other scriptures, that we are to partake of this. Now there's a couple of traditions like the Salvation Army and the Quakers, the Society of Friends, they would interpret communion maybe as a shared meal or having bread together or, or, or a meal together. Many churches like ours, we have the table, we have the bread, we have the juice. And as Methodists, these are symbols that we're partaking of, bread of the field, a means of grace, but Christ is present. Christ is present in us and through us. And because of that, we want everyone to experience this sacrament of the church, don't we, Pastor George? We want everyone to come forward, and once in a while, what I do is I tear an either bigger piece of bread off, and I tell people to take a big piece of Jesus. So when we come forward, we take things that are earthly, but they become divine in the sense that Christ is present in us and through us. So if you read this scripture, you probably would be very confused, and maybe you still are, but what we're doing in communion is coming back to Christ, reconnecting with him. Our first love, as the Apostle Paul says, and through communion, then, we're feeding our bodies and our souls. Amen. Well, friends, God is good. And all the time, we are so blessed. I am so blessed. Um, I am so blessed to be able to give. We all give differently. Some of us give financially. Some of us give with our times and our talents. It's amazing to me that for 2,000 years, the Christian church has existed predominantly because of the giving and the love of its people. Uh, we give, not because God needs anything from us, but there's one thing we can give God that he can't take, and that is our faithfulness and our devotion. Our giving is an extension of our love for God through Jesus Christ. Let us give to God our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>
merciful God, God that we encounter in each other, God that we encounter through the hearing of the organ and the piano, God that we encounter through the light that storms through the stained glass windows, God that we encounter in the smiles and the laughter of our children, God when we encounter, we encounter your son through the bread and through the cup of Holy Communion. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this church. We thank you that you have called us to be the people of Jesus Christ in this time and in this place. God, I ask you to bless our offering and that you grow it and stretch it and multiply it. Not so that the pastor can buy a Lamborghini, so that the church can continue to be all that you've called us to be, so that we can preach Christ and that we can continue through your grace to transform Sydney and the world in a world with so much darkness and hurt. May we be light and hope. May we be love and peace and mercy. For this is why your son, our broken bread and poured out blood, came to this earth. In his name we pray. Amen. In our closing hymn this morning, which is in the faith we sing, or as I like to jokingly call it, the singing hymnal. Uh, it's 2039. It's holy, holy. Uh, in this black supplement, it'll also be on the screen as well. Let us sing as we are able, holy, holy.
Christ is so in love with you. He might not even realize how much he loves you. He loved you before you were born, and he's going to love you for eternity. May we take that great love and may we bring it out into the world. And I bless you all this day and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, I praise and thank you for this day. I thank you that we encounter your Son, our Lord, through the organ, through the stained glass, through the handshake, through the singing, through the reading of Scripture, and yes, through the cup and the bread, through your Son's broken body and poured out flesh. We find him really and truly present when we come to your table. May we seek after him. May we seek to be more like him. And may we go into Sydney and all the world and continue to show that love so that this community and community everywhere may be strengthened with your son, Jesus Christ, at the center. In his mighty name we pray. Amen.